couple stats that have stood out to me lately. Uh, CDC, I think they said like 85% of all COVID deaths were people who had not one, not two, not three, but four, simultaneously four comid, uh, comorbidities. So with the question of dying from COVID versus of COVID, um, 85% of these deaths. And then the CDC recently lowered the the overall, all that um being being as it as it is, uh, still in addition to that, they lowered by I think seventy two thousand all of the COVID deaths in America and said, whoops, you know, I guess we overcounted. So so eighty five percent of them are are these people with four comorbidities, which seems to heavily imply these are deaths with COVID rather than of COVID. Then you got seventy two thousand just taken right off of the number. And then another stat uh, recently came out that for those who are are under the age of sixty five that um, in 2020, in the year 2020, uh, that there were more alcohol-related deaths than COVID deaths for those under the age of 65. And that doesn't even begin, and, and we know that, that, I mean, that was, a, I think it was a 25% bump. Uh, alcohol-related deaths have, for multiple years running, have increased by about 3 to 4% each year, but it bumped all of a sudden from 2019 to 2020 by 25%. And so you have more alcohol-related deaths than COVID deaths in 2020 for those who are under the age of 65. And that doesn't even account for suicide deaths, um, other drug-related overdose uh, deaths, and then things that are, are not deaths, but still detrimental and in terms of depression and anxiety, uh, child development being um, delayed, you know, because you can't learn how to talk when you're two if you can't see adults' faces, you know, because they're covered in masks. And so it just seems like like the, the verdict is, is coming back in in wave after wave after wave of, of not feelings or not hunches, but, but hard, cold evidence uh, that we did more harm than good. W w do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, I don't think there is any dispute that the lockdowns cause deaths and injuries. Uh, even today, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've been busy, but I, I keep tabs on the news throughout the day because I have to write for my blog. And uh, Fauci was on an interview. And uh, if I'm remembering correctly, the quote that was attributed to him today was, we'll never know the true cost of lockdowns. Mm. That's what he's saying today. Fauci said that. Fauci said that. Wow. Right, exactly. So if yeah. Fauci's <laughs> acknowledging that, right, you know, it's got to be a lot worse mm -hmm. than uh, than he's suggesting for him to even go that far. Right. Um, the, the other thing I would add to your comments is, um, and I try to stay away from conspiracy theories. I'm a lawyer, right? And what I mean by conspiracy theory, I don't mean anything negative about that because we've seen a lot of conspiracy theories like the Wuhan lab right. leak theory, right, mm -hmm. turn into fact. Right. And uh, even the bio labs in Ukraine. So yeah, the difference between the conspiracy the and the truth is usually three to six months. But I know, I think what you mean is you try to stick away from um, making assertions based off of speculation. You want to have evidence. You're a lawyer. Is that what, what you're saying? Yeah. Could I, I usually, my litmus test is, could I prove this in court? Good. Yeah. Right. It's good. And, and by prove in court, you don't have to have a hundred percent proof. You just have to meet the standard of proof, right? right. So you can, you can prove things that that you can't conclusively prove, but you can prove it to a level in court that satisfies a judge or a jury. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that we know is true and that I could prove in court and I could, I could prove this one conclusively is that excess deaths in the US are high, right? And so what excess deaths means is they look at the number of, the average number of deaths from all causes. Okay. Whatever, whatever cause it is, they just don't worry about the cause, but somebody died. Mm -hmm. And then they compare that to a baseline. Okay. And the baseline is the aggregate, you know, the average from all the years in the 10 or 20 years previous, depending on what model you're looking at. And you can either be above or below that baseline, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, this is an important statistic. So you might have a, a really bad flu season. Mm. And we're not perfect at keeping track of of people who die from flu. So you just want to, let's just look and see where we are in excess deaths, right? The overall so, increase. Right, exactly. So during that flu season, hey, 100,000 people died more than um, in, a, in that regular fall season. And so now we can say, well, you know, we probably circumstantially, a lot of those are, are related to this um, hard flu season because we don't have any other explanation for why there should be excess deaths. Mm-hmm. 
Well, what we know is that during the pandemic, there have been two inflection points on excess deaths, right? So there was a there was a spike in excess deaths in March of 2020. Okay. And those are probably related to COVID. And especially as COVID moved through the nursing homes and the elderly and at-risk populations, right? You saw a lot of- Right, we would call those Andrew Cuomo deaths. Plus, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Gretchen Whitmer and right, yeah. you know a bunch of others that, that haven't had to pay the piper yet. But right. um, in addition, those would be your lockdown deaths, right? So your suicides and, you know, in particular moving through, through 2020. Well, there was a second inflection point and that was in December of 2020. And again, we don't know for sure, right? But it wasn't COVID because at that time, you know, all you had was a lot of immunity that was built up by COVID survivors. And plus in December of 2020, you had the rollout of the vaccines, which is supposed to reduce mm -hmm. COVID mortality, right? That's what they tell us. They tell us that, hey, you know, they now admit another conspiracy theory, which is that the vaccines don't prevent transmission. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe they don't prevent transmission, they say, but they reduce serious illness and death. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as the vaccines are deployed in December of 2020, you're expecting to see excess deaths uh, coming down, right? But in fact, what we see is, an increasing trend hmm. of excess deaths from from 2000 December 2020 there's a spike in the summer of 21 hmm. and then uh where we are now is we're on an increasing trajectory we don't know where it's going to peak if it if it'll come back down again but we're substantially above the baseline hmm. as we sit today wow. right now right a huge huge amount of excess deaths and and I think, you know, probably all of your viewers are, are familiar by now. It was widely reported. Um, you know, one of the executives at, at one of the insurance companies came out and said that, you know, what they're looking at is a mortality event that is uh, consistent with three gigantic natural disasters combined. Hmm. And what, what, what he was that? referring to, they're paying claims, right? Right. It's that are way above the average level of claims that they plan for, even allowing for three natural disasters. That's where they are. So wow. what he's referring to is, is that level of excess deaths that they, I mean, you can find that in the government statistics right now. It's not controversial, but it's not widely reported in the media. And the right, media and seemed, so we have this excess deaths, real quick, just to, to recap, we have this, um, not just the spike. So we had the spike in March, 2020, and we're willing to say, okay, some of that was COVID probably. And some of that also was related to lockdowns, maybe suicide or, you know, anxiety induced or alcohol induced or whatever. But then there's this other spike that happens in December, 2020, but it, then it doesn't go back down to the baseline because in, by, by the summer of 2021, um, it's just not just one month, but month after month from 2021 to where we, we sit today, just uh, consistently above the baseline of excess deaths. And simultaneously, what we have to fa factor in is that we have uh, more vaccinated individuals than ever before. And we also have, uh, you know, the effects of Omicron, um, which was uh, mild, uh, did not produce a lot of deaths, um, but also pervasive, very, very transmissible, which means that we should have just, just from time passing by two years, but then with Omicron also, and then with the vaccine, we should have um, the highest immunity today than ever before. And yet you're saying that the excess deaths are still there. Therefore, it must be related to something else. What, what, what well, do you think? Right. So that, that raises the question, what is causing the excess deaths? Mm -hmm. And so there are two things that I can observe. I don't have an answer. Nobody has an answer. And as a lawyer, I can, I don't even have any evidence to put on in court, but I can observe a couple of things. So the first thing I observe is a widespread lack of media curiosity in mm. the reason for historic levels of excess deaths. Okay. So that means something, right? Um, I, you know, I could speculate as to what it means based on the way I've seen the media behave in the past, but that would be speculation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just observing that there, okay. you, you know, you, it's curious that given how interested the media was in COVID deaths, the media has a corresponding lack of curiosity 
in the mysterious cause of all of these excess deaths that we're seeing. Yeah. Good observation. So that's observation number one. And then the second one is that when, when there have been articles related to the excess deaths, the, the, um, you know, I would call mild curiosity that's been expressed has resulted in a set of guesses that typically reduced to, and this goes to your original point, that typically reduced to speculation by the experts that are interviewed for these news articles saying that they, that it might be, again, just they're speculating too, it might be deferred medical care that mm. is causing all of the, the excess deaths that we're seeing. Like, like yeah. elective surgeries and things like that that were all postponed? Correct. So during lockdowns, when you weren't allowed to go to the hospital or you were too afraid to go to the hospital mm -hmm. because the fear of getting COVID was greater than the fear of deferring your, your treatment, uh, those people put off their health care. Mm -hmm. And so now we're paying the piper mm -hmm. from all this deferred health care, right? So, right. And real quick, just uh, for our listeners, elective surgeries doesn't just mean like, you know, get, getting plastic surgery and a facelift. It, elective surgeries, uh, many of them are very serious things, things that are, are life-threatening, that a person has to have surgery, but it's just not immediate, uh, immediately urgent. But that doesn't mean that the surgery is, is not necessary. It is a surgery that must happen um, eventually or uh, the person uh, could could die. And it's so even an elective surgery, that sounds like an insignificant, unnecessary surgery. Uh, but these, many of them are necessary surgeries. Uh, there's just a longer time gap, but that time gap is um, is not indefinite. And if it's pushed off too long, uh, it really could cost the person's life. Is, is that correct? Sure. Yeah. And, and a good example, I think, would be, um, you know, somebody whose doctor recommends that they get a stent put in, uh, mm. you know, a cardiac stent. And, uh, but it's not, mandatory mm -hmm. right so it's just something you need to do soon as soon as you can get it scheduled to fit with your calendar and so that's something that can easily be deferred by that person right. um the the other one that you see uh discussed a lot are uh, deferred things screenings right so cancer screenings breast cancer um uh, prostate cancer screenings things like that gotcha. and so there's you know some speculation that people having deferred those those screenings now they're getting the cancers that would have been caught and treated had they not um, uh, deferred those those mm -hmm. examinations. So there's a lot you could say about that, right? So if they're correct, then these would be additional casualties of the lockdowns that you That's were right. referring to before. That's right. And and if that trend line continues and that that delta, the gap, right, of of excess deaths, that bolus of excess deaths is going to continue to increase the casualties that are directly attributable to lockdowns. And it is conceivable that we will pass the COVID mortality, which is, as you also pointed out correctly, the COVID mortality is currently decreasing That's right. as the CDC is, is now tightening the standards on what can be considered a COVID death. It's resulting in a reduction of the total. So I think it's, it's down over 12% now from from the maximum. So while the, you know, the COVID deaths are coming down, the lockdown related or deferred uh, medical care related, if that's the explanation are increasing mm -hmm. and they may cross at some point. Right. And that's just one factor from the lockdowns, you know, in terms of de deferred health care. And then there's also, we can, we can draw a pretty straight correlation to substance abuse, alcoholism, uh, suicide. We wouldn't necessarily count all suicides, but again, we would look at the baseline from previous years. And then we look at the spike uh, that the excess suicide deaths, and, and we could probably say, well, what, what novel thing happened in 2020 and 2021 that would cause this excess and COVID lockdowns and those kinds of things are, are a pretty sound explanation. Wait, 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 real quick, before you go, do me a favor, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the bell so you'll be notified with all our new content as it comes out on a daily basis. And if you're willing to support this ministry, you can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com slash donate. Thanks so much. God bless.